Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to our BA Product and Furniture Design course introduction session. My name is Griselda. I'm a member of the student recruitment team here at Chelsea College of Arts. We also have Jason and we have Mercedes. I will introduce them properly in a moment. But first of all, I'm just going to run through a little bit about how today will work. So your microphones are muted during our presentations. Your webcams are not visible, so we can't see or hear you. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions at the end. To ask these questions, you can type your questions into the question box. This Q&A will be right at the end of the event, so feel free to ask me questions during the presentations. Finally, you will receive a recording of the event via email after the event. I'm now going to introduce the other panellists. So if you'd like to go first, Jason. Oh, hello. Yes, I'm Jason Cleverly. I'm the course leader for product and furniture design at Chelsea. And Mercedes? Hi, I'm Mercedes. I'm currently a third year student on the course. Brilliant, thank you. And now we're going to hand back over to Jason, who will present. Thank you. Hi there. Yeah, so I just wanted to start off with um, a kind of unpacking of what, where we're going with the course, what we're interested in. And actually, my understanding of what we're doing is actually does align with the university's um agenda for the future for the future of institutions like ours which have uh, an amazing remit to work with people of all kinds to do all sorts of useful uh, and and um that fit into the UAL's uh, social purpose agenda of climate racial and social justice so i've taken this from our um uh, the document that describes that so what we want to do is bring power the cultural experiences that bring joy meaning and purpose to human societies we want to build inclusive societies in which difference of all kinds is celebrated and valued we want to stabilize our climate regenerate the environment on which all life depends we need to build a more equitable prosperity and well-being for all people so quite a lot to ask there but i think art and design has the power to do those things um, can I change the slide? Yes, I can. So product and furniture design, what are we interested in beyond those kind of larger concerns? So material practice is very important to us. How you manipulate materials in order to uh, create a new object. Uh, we work with a, a range of materials. I'll talk about that in a minute. Professional practice. We have quite a lot of uh, live projects, as it says below, which we think informs the way students might prosper in the future and understand how to negotiate with the real world, let's say. We are lucky to have quite a lot of visiting practitioners who come in and speak or run seminars or workshops. And all of our tutors are all designers, makers and researchers. And I think our location is something to be um, celebrated as well. So meet the staff. So myself, I started out a while back as a practitioner i used to make quite a lot of objects like this crab here this is a carved wooden crab it's uh electric and it has a sensor in it so when you get closer it starts moving its legs but more recently i've worked in the museum sector developing situated uh objects that encourage and engender interaction an understanding of whatever the, the museum context is. You can see here, this is uh, these two large pieces of furniture that I built are helping people to understand this particular context of Dr. Johnson's house, just off the Strand here in London. This is another piece that I made for a small museum in Cornwall, which is a, in a mining district. And so this particular uh, installation has ways in which uh, people, um, visitors can draw onto a tablet at the back of this machine, look closely at material samples, sorry, mineral samples from the collection and draw them. You can see an image beginning to appear on the screen above and then they're shared on the web. So it's encouraging people to support each other and to engage directly with museum samples. And more recently, I've been fiddling around with lenses. I use a lot of cameras and online uh, tech with my work. So I, I was kind of stripping it back a little bit here. And I've been working with a, a group of fellow researchers. And this is a project for Pollock's uh, Toy um, Museum in Covent Garden. 
uh, another member of staff, very key member of staff, Fabian. Uh, I just put in a piece of her college work, actually, when she was at Goldsmiths. And this is a piece of her furniture from my final show. On the right is uh, an example of a project she did with um, uh, the South Bank. And it was looking at royal weddings and how ordinary people might be celebrating their weddings through similar kinds of devices that royal weddings have, like um, particular kinds of ceramics that you get on those occasions. And this is a piece she did for a school and I think all of the students made these whirling structures uh, together. She's quite good at working with big amounts of people, actually, kind of orchestrating energetic, collaborative uh, occasions. And this is a piece that she worked with people from the favelas in Brazil on the south bank, quite near where we are, uh, to recreate this, this, this particular kind of favela of, of, of Rio. We have Tim Carson, who is a jeweler. He's a very good jeweler. He's very good on material practice. He's a very good tutor as well. Uh, his work sometimes challenges what jewelry might be. And he also has a series of um, uh, personas that sometimes uh, appear in his talks and, and, and he plays music and all sorts of things as well. So he's really considering how uh, a designer maker might operate. Junior Phipps. Very lucky to work with Junior. His his current uh, main practice is working in the domestic interior to build these large structures, usually sinks and sideboards. He's worked in all sorts of contexts and he's made public art as well. But he's an expert in concrete. Uh, Liang, Liang Zheng, she's working with us at the moment. Her particular concern is maybe the object which is a more metaphorical object than maybe the intersection between art and design but she spends a lot of time looking very closely at ordinary household objects and how they function and how they're made and how they work under different cultural situations stefano is a furniture maker and a designer his work is many many and varied he's got lots of uh, excellent sort of uh, standard skills in making, but he's often trying to kind of push the possibilities of materials to make furniture. Uh, Danae, she's working currently with the first year. She uh, is somebody who works with artists, uh, musicians to help develop their, their particular kinds of personas uh, and presence, but also she's very interested in working with uh, different ways of manipulating fabric and reusing fabric and recycling fabric as well. Uh, Nadine, she's working currently with the first years. Her background, not only as a, as a lecturer, is within uh, um, objects for children, artifacts for children that support their learning and maybe sometimes interfaces with new technology and how to kind of get that balance between the analog and the digital. So she understands play and children very well. Uh, this is Adrienne. Adrienne Benny is our critical practice lecturer. She's uh, just submitted her PhD, actually, uh, which is to do with hostile architecture and how how sometimes buildings and, and structures within cities like London are constructed to stop people sleeping rough or to stop animals or to stop skateboarders skateboarding. Uh, this is some work from her, her MA, I believe, and I think it's made out of those scobies from kombucha to make these structures. We have lots of visiting lecturers. I'm not going to uh, go through all of these, but over the years, we've had very significant um, artists and designers who've worked in lots of different ways. I mean, I just point out that to the lower right, you can see Gareth Neal, who does all sorts of interesting things with both traditional processes of furniture making, but also new methods and new technologies. And luckily, um, great for us sometimes people like gareth come in and this is one uh, workshop we were running relatively recently and gareth is very kind in uh, working with groups on a one-day chair project and in this case he even tested them out as well so he must have had a lot of uh, uh, uh you know thinking that these seats were going to work and there he looks slightly tentative i think there but i think it was a successful piece that they made Core cool structure so currently we run on these uh, systems of uh, uh, of a five week 
uh, and a 10 week unit subsequent that follow on one from each other. One kind of usually prepares one for the subsequent unit. So this is a semester here, semester one, we have introduction to craft design and materiality. So that's just kind of settling people down, making, uh, uh, getting people um, into the workshops, getting them badged up in the various different health and safety procedures that are needed. And then we go into a, a, a more complex uh, series of rotations where we look at particular material practices, usually running three week cycles uh, in alignment. So people are working across the workshops in different material areas. Then we have uh, a very interesting unit called the anthropology of the object, where we look at the way in which people might understand ordinary affordances, ordinary everyday uh use of of artifacts and objects and how that mediates human behavior as well as uh, provides particular kinds of functions and then we move into a, a larger unit where we well we do all sorts of things i'll show you some of the images of what we've been doing in that particular area uh, at the moment that particular unit and then in year two we have at the moment in unit five we're running a a project where people are making uh, a batch production. So they're making uh, in a range of materials, metal, ceramics, uh, cast jesmonite and so on. They're making a short run of five objects that are all the same and they're for sale in a shop. They will be selected for sale in our shop, which is called Not Just a Shop, which is in Hoban. Uh, and later in the month, I believe they will be having an exhibition there and the work will be for sale. Not all of the work will go in, but the selected pieces. And then we have unit six. Now, unit six is a collaborative unit. I'm working on that at the moment. We have 700 students from the design school and we split them up. Uh, we mix them up into different groups so they can work together on a, a collaborative project, which actually has been uh, quite successful, I, I think, in terms of making people understand that in the real world or the world, some, <laughs> the post-graduating world, um, the, working with others, Understanding collaboration is a really important process. Uh, and then we move into design uh, proposals two uh, here, unit seven. And we're working this year with the Worshipful Company of Fan Makers. We're working with uh, a museum called the Charter House. We're working with Howarth Furniture. Uh, oh, there's another one we're working with. Oh, Stockwell Community Park. So there are four projects, four live projects. Uh, that run there and in unit seven students will prepare uh, to develop their ideas for selection through to unit eight where those things those objects or those artifacts or those designs that they develop will be deployed now in between uh, year two and year three there's a, an opportunity to go and do uh, diploma in professional studies where students go out and work in, in uh, with, with internships or voluntary work or whatever it might be we start to develop that well, actually, around now, people will start thinking about what they're going to be doing in that um, uh, okay, in, that, in that particular occasion. And we've got quite a few people. We've only started this relatively recently, but each year we have more and more people going out uh, uh, and then coming back uh, to form a four year version of the course. There's also a certificate in cre creative computing, which is at Camberwell, which looks at app development uh, and embedded computing and so on. And then in the year three, we have unit nine, which looks at how do you develop your practice? What is it you're trying to do? At the moment, uh, perhaps Mercedes might mention this, we have uh, four different tutors who work in, in diverse ways, some of which are more to do with industrial design, some of which are more to do with individual bespoke objects, and students are gravitating towards those kinds of ways of working and trying to understand that through our what we might have called in the old days uh, a dissertation but today we call it the reflective practitioner so people are writing about their their making process they're writing about the context for whatever it is that they're they're working in and obviously that's a a, a, a a significant piece of writing that helps people understand what it is they're doing in order to move on to unit 10 where this is the basically final major project. People are develop, developing work for their portfolios, for uh, possible postgraduate study, MAs and so on, or to go out into the real world. I must stop saying the real world. The university is the real world as well. So they're also developing their, their, um, their work for the degree show as well. Okay, so here we go. So imagine, let's imagine that the first year 
most people are sort of channeled through this particular uh, time. Uh, we we have to kind of get people to. We don't know. Lots of people come from all different kinds of positions and understandings or experience, but we're channeling through people people through the same kind of thing just to find out to be diagnostic to find out what it is they're interested in and how they're going to work with those things so you're kind of taken through the same channel let's say so some work from the first year this is a project about play using wood this is a project for ceramics where we're looking at cultural uh, different kinds of cultural um, condiments uh, it, it's kind of mainly around salt but in this case we were looking at other other uh, condiments as well and this is a piece in one of the material rotations to do with metal. And this is a this is a, a machine for drawing or a device for drawing where four uh, different people uh, work together to create a drawing. You can see this stick of um, graphite in the middle there. So remember, I mentioned the anthropology of the object. <clears throat> when we run this, we often set up situations like, for example, here we have uh, we use our banqueting hall, appropriately enough. We set up a big, long table. On one side of the table, people were eating their dinner. On the other side of the table uh, are half the group recording what people are doing and seeing how they uh, actually eat food and how they talk to each other and how they work with the knives and forks or the chopsticks or, and whatever it might be. That's for the first part of this project. And then the students, uh, a day later or so, we switch around and we can see here we start to use more disruptive tools in order to eat. You can see those two in the middle uh, preparing their fingers with these um, uh, plastic knives and forks that they're going to try and eat with. And when we do things like that, we're doing it as a serious way of coming up with understanding of how ordinary things work, what makes things work in an ordinary, uh, everyday kind of tacit knowledge kind of way, but also are these things going to create through chance interesting new ways of thinking about design and thinking about uh, purposes of design? And, you know, through that, we, we think about other kinds of disruption, which might have implications for disability. In this case, Dahlia, who is a pianist, uh, created this structure on this, these fingers so that it became harder and harder to play and she recorded that progression which might have implications for disability uh going on to unit four that i mentioned here we have students there's mercedes there from her first year working with junior to cast quite large uh exterior pieces of furniture in concrete uh, which are still there actually in the parade ground and people really like using them. This yeah, this piece here, I, I found quite, quite lovely the way those two girls are sitting here. There's a lovely kind of organisation of, of the space. And here we can see Junior and Fabian testing out one of the larger moving structures. Also, unit four, sometimes where we work with places like Stockwell Community Centre to build furniture. Uh, and we use uh, recycled... Uh, uh, birch ply uh, that we get from the uh, kitchen uh, designers, kitchen fabricators who normally would just throw this material away. It's incredibly useful and expensive material that we reuse. And here we can see that material has been used to make a set of nesting shelves, which was uh, taken to um, uh, what's it called? Where's that place? <laughs> I've forgotten where it is. Uh, Birmingham uh, Arena. Oh, sorry, I do, I've forgotten what it's flipping called. Do apologize uh Birmingham exhibition center that's it as part of a young furniture designers uh project okay so now let's say we're in the second year so what are the possibilities so there's a whole bunch of other uh, different ways of working and people are investigating this they're looking around we're giving them options we're letting them have a try at this they might go through some choppy channels they might go through, through some calm waters but maybe start to assess and think about what it is they're actually going to do and you can see that the boat has arrived at a particular island there so the kind of project so this is stave hill eco park max here developed a glow-in-the-dark moth feeder that was 3d printed i tried to take a photograph of it in the dark but i couldn't quite work that out uh so we work with this community uh, sorry this um eco park and it's an amazing space, which used to be the Russia dock where boats came in from all over the world. 
uh, to London to pick goods up and take them out. But that's all kind of filled in. You can see bits of evidence of where that history is. But now uh, this particular area is an eco park run by volunteers, uh, really important for the community and really important for promoting biodiversity in that space too. Uh, this is the same place. Uh, this is a frog hotel on the left. Uh, so underneath frogs and frog spawn were <coughs> tadpoles were encouraged to to use this as an, an ecological space. Uh, and on the right, we weren't quite sure about the gun, but the idea was, you know, uh, uh, was to kind of use the, the the viewfinder on the cameras and so on to identify birds and identify creatures through looking through these. Also working in a museum. Uh, what are the ways in which people can develop uh, devices uh, for interpretation and for understanding and maybe for diversity as well uh, yeah here's some work from those projects where they've been cited in the museum uh, we work with the worshipful company of fan makers this project has has made some amazing objects and these two quite exemplify I think uh, particularly the one on the left which was one uh, but uh, there's a there's a there's a prize that the worshipful company of fan makers give us. The one on the left, this is a prototype by Fabiana, and she's looking at developing lightweight fans that also have light in them. And they're powered by solar panels, and it's for people, poor people living in particular circumstances in favelas and so on. She's Brazilian herself. I believe she's working with the, with the Worshipful Company to develop this and put it into production. The piece on the right by Romeo. He was using bottle tops uh, to melt down and create these feathers. And he was looking at kind of making people understand the, this kind of tragedy of, um, you know, wildlife, particularly birds getting, um, you know, plastic in their crops and so on. So uh, and this was actually one of the winners, which Jesse Van Steen, he made a lovely piece, which was not only a, uh, <clears throat> a hair comb, but it was a fan too. Um, and also his Harry Barrington, he was looking at uh, sex workers. So sometimes doing things that perhaps the worshipful company of fan makers would be quite surprised about. But that's why they want us, because we're coming up with different angles and ways of thinking uh, and about political uh, protest. And oh, yes. And then this is last year's winners. So there's a prize, uh, first, second and third prize. Uh, 500 pounds to 300 pounds I think but also students are taken 10 students are selected to be to be taken to Westdean um, uh, College so I'll just finish on, on this image here this is uh, one of the uh, evenings the fan makers put on and these three uh, students were uh, spoken about very highly by the the uh, the master here you can see the master giving a speech and this is out at West Dean with uh, 10 students who were successful and spent a week of a, a free uh, <clears throat> bed and board uh, and uh, a, a series of workshops looking at fan making. What the fan makers want to do is reintroduce the practice of fan making in the UK. And they give us uh, this opportunity to try it in lots of different ways. You don't have to become a fan maker, but, but you learn things on the way. Uh, another project from year two. This is the community hack or the furniture hack, which maybe Mercedes will talk about a little bit in a minute. But this is a really nice co-design project where the residents of a community centre in central London, south central London, are working to, with the residents to come up with structures that will be interactive or enhance this particular space outside the community centre. And... It was a fabulous day also where we had people voting on which ones will be taken through to production. And some of these pieces are being taken through to production to be fabricated and installed permanently in this space. So real impact in, in, the, uh, in the local community. And sometimes some of these objects end up in other exhibitions as well. Uh, this is a trip that some of us took to Singapore. We have a relationship with NAFA. Singapore, which is an art school out there. <clears throat> and uh, this, you can see on the right, some of us visiting uh, this interesting Haupa Villa, which is, well, I won't go on about it, but two, two students went last year. We have two students going again this year, subject to their being selected to be taken out. A really interesting opportunity. Uh, this is actually, this is by Maria. Maria made this piece on her DPS year out. 
uh, and she made it for the company she was working with. They weren't a furniture company, but she decided a piece of furniture would be a great thing to do while she was on that year out for them for kind of publicity purposes and so on. And she happened to also enter the piece for the Young Furniture Makers exhibition, uh, uh, sorry, prize uh, a few weeks ago. And brilliantly, she won... Uh, uh, one of the top prizes, which is great, and she's being flown to Milan and all these kinds of things. So that was marvellous. Uh, OK, here we are now. This is, imagine we're now, are we in, oh, it's not moving forward for some reason. Oh, anyone know why this doesn't move? Perhaps you can move it. Because, are they? <laughs> not the, OK, now we're in the third year. So you, you've decided the kind of way you're going to move forward there is support. There are lifeboats. There are people shouting at you from the shore, giving you advice. And then, of course, off you are into the real world. I oh, said it again, didn't I? <laughs> OK, so some work from year three. This is somebody who is looking particularly at shelter uh, using weaving techniques that she developed, actually, from working in the uh, Stave Hill project. Uh, some more furniture. This piece on the right was a, a great a third year piece, which was developed uh, by looking closely at how people quite often students move around and may go and stay in one place or do sofa surfing and how these Ikea bags are often used for that. Uh, <clears throat> so the student decided to kind of create this sort of wardrobe, this chest of drawers and hangers that could be moved around, manipulated and, and, and reused in different contexts. So it's a very well researched project. Oh, let me try again. Here we have uh, this one actually does looks a, a little bit uh, underwhelming, but this was a fantastically well researched project, which is about keeping food warm for homeless people. It was a, it was a lovely project. And we have people making furniture, as you might imagine. The piece on the right, sort of relatively uh, conventional. The piece on the left, the student was looking particularly at the idea of uh, people spending perhaps a lot of time sitting at tables during, sorry, sitting at their desk during uh, COVID, for example, and not getting enough time to walk around. So this, uh, I'm not sure what the health and safety implications of it, but every now and then this ch chair would decide to flip you off and, <laughs> and make you get up and do something else. Uh, oh, sorry. And this is uh, uh, our display at New Designers from a few years ago. We have lighting quite a complex extravagant furniture the piece on the right is a car so we have a foundry at chelsea so that was 3d printed <coughs> uh stool and then it was turned into a cast it was a really quite a complex project it was done in multiple parts uh, by the student there quite heavy but quite uh, a significant object with lots of different aspects to it oh here we go a uh, project around sign language, a, a kit for people to help them develop understandings of sign language was really nicely worked out and developed a third year project. This one maybe has more kind of uh, a dialogue with the anthropology of the object, working with the idea of disruption, but also collaboration. So all of these uh, ceramic vessels were connected by these tubes. And in order to uh, drink from them, uh, you all have to lift and uh, move your glasses at the same time, your cups at the same time. Otherwise, the, the liquid spills out. A rather lovely idea. Oh. Uh, and a piece by Mariana, a rather splendid rocking chair from a few years ago. Uh, Loki. Loki developed a fantastic uh, body of work around from, co from the problems of COVID with people with smell and how smell is severely disrupted, has been severely disrupted by COVID. And in this case, um, these objects were 3D printed and then cast in jesmonite uh, with these great colors. And it was, it was a, a kind of toolkit to help people to re-establish their sense of smell. And there were some quite great shots of it here. He had packaging and all sorts. And leading on from that, recently we put him forward, even though he graduated for this uh, uh, kind of knowledge exchange project with ISS, which are a large company, large global company that wanted somebody to make awards for their staff, uh, for their staff award ceremony. And it, what was great was Loki was given uh, a reasonable uh, money to do this, but also they made a film of him making it and went through the kind of understanding of why he would do it and what it means and how this object would support the uh, celebration of those different uh, staff from ISS. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of the end of 
uh, the student work uh, opportunity. So as I mentioned, we have the Creative Computing Inst Institute Diploma. Uh, and there's also the CCI Diploma in Apple Development. Uh, so you can learn how to make apps. We have a student who's just completed that this year. He's back with us. He's very excited about some of the things he's learned about Apple uh, app development. Uh, the DPS, where you obviously you can go out and, and, and uh, work with companies, as as we mentioned, uh, Maria had done. And there are still uh, opportunities for exchange and versions of uh, Erasmus called Turing. So we have we have students coming in, and we also have students going out on study abroad and uh, exchange programs. Oop. And what we're after, obviously, personal statement, you'll get, you, you know, if you're interested in applying to us, you'll get all the information about how you're going to proceed with this. We usually do an online uh, interview nowadays. Uh, and I think that this is the correct deadline, the 31st of January. January. You might want to check that. Uh, and it's really important to us, these interviews. And I think they're almost like the first tutorial you might have. Uh, here's my contact. Uh, I do apologise. I've got a bit of a bunged up nose today, which is why I'm standing a bit strange. Um, uh, so, yeah, please, do, if you want to send me any uh, questions, via, if you think of some later, or, or for example, you might want to say, look, I've got this portfolio I'm putting together. Do you, could you have a little look at it? And I'm quite happy to do that. I think that's me, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Hi, I'm going to talk a little bit now. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm a third year student and I'm just sort of going to tell you guys from the angle of someone who's been through the course and is coming to an end sort of what to expect and show you some of my work. Um, so why product and furniture design? Uh, what I really personally like about the course is that it's a very material based course. I have had the opportunity to work with a range of things because Chelsea provides um, workshops for metal, wood, ceramics, textile, foundry and casting, and 3D print, which were most of all things I was unfamiliar with before coming in. So being able to learn those things within like the start and I guess end of my first year, really it was something that I found special about the course. It provides the opportunity to work on live briefs. Um, I think Jason mentioned this earlier, but um, throughout the course, I've been able to really develop my portfolio uh, working with actual live clients and sort of gaining that experience. We've worked, as he said, with the Worshipful Fan Company, with Stave Hill Ecological Park, with the Museum of the Order of St. John's. So just being able to work with these live clients has really given me the experience um, that I feel like I could gain through internships, but the fact that I do them alongside uni work is just really, really good, I think. Um, and I also think the course really pushes the boundaries of what traditional product and furniture design can be. The, they really, you know, they don't teach you how to make something traditionally. They sort of look for ways to push for sustainability, push for new ideas, push for contemporary design. But at the same time, if you are focused on more of like the arts and craft movement, you can really look into that and sort of think about that in the context of being a modern day practitioner. Um, and we get guest lectures, which I also think, as Jason mentioned, is really special. We get the opportunity and access to speak to people who are already in the industry and sort of understand what has got them there and not only just get work presented by them, but be able to actually get into contact with them and visit their studios. And just, yeah, the uni really provides a great um, sort of networking system for us. Um, so I guess a week in the course, what to expect from the perspective of a student, you have loads of one-to-one -one tutorials, group tutorials, which means you'll be able to not only share your work with your tutors and get feedback from them, but with your entire cohort. Um, you get seminars and lectures about different things. We sort of have, for example, some lectures will be about material use or I guess maybe the history of furniture design, but then some seminars will be about things like drawing and learning how to do more of like technical things. Uh, workshops, we have, as I mentioned, a great amount of workshops here at Chelsea and we have maker spaces on our department floor, which is great. We have access to that. And a lot of independent work and in the in the studio, which is really special. We all get studio spaces every single year that you're in. Um, some of the spaces you get your own sort of area and some of the spaces you get to share with others, which I think is really good because you might be working independently in there, but because it's a communal, studio space you really get to develop that studio culture and be able to talk to other students about your work and see where everyone's at um and we have a beautiful library here in chelsea which i spend a lot of time in so 
you know, expect yourself to be in there quite a lot. And in terms of the course size, students, I think it ranges between 60 to 70 students. So I would say that um, it's quite an intimate course. I think I know almost every single person on my um, in my year, which I think is great because it makes us sort of like really have access to that one to one time with our tutors and have everything we need in it. Uh, okay. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about my work. So this was for unit four. Um, we had a concrete, uh, it, well, the unit was called form, function and ornament. And we specifically were instructed to create those concrete structures that um, Jason mentioned earlier. And I thought this was a really special project because the actual object itself is actually living in Chelsea. larger scale and sort of learn to contextualize our work a little bit better in terms of like not just creating a piece of work and putting it somewhere but sort of giving it more history and all of that kind of stuff um for my second uh that i'm going to show is unit six this was a really special project i think because we got to work collaboratively with a range of other design practices um, so we worked with graphic design, interior, textile, illustration, and we were sort of all like lumped together into groups and told to find ways to address the climate crisis in sort of a creative form. And I found this project really special because I was sort of able to gain a clear understanding of what it's like to work in more of like a studio situation or work for a company, let's say, where you have a range of different people who have come from different backgrounds and have different things that they're really good at and sort of put all of our good skills together to create a body of work. And we ended up creating a um, toy and a children's book that would teach children about recycling and the importance of it, but in a way that didn't really make it seem like the world is going to end because of the climate crisis, but more talking about like, what can we do to help it? So that was a really, really special. And I learned a lot of things from working with graphic designers and interior designers, which have really helped inform my practice now. Um, and this was, I think, one of my favorite projects, as Jason mentioned, because we were working with a live client, which was the Stockwell Community Center. And as he mentioned, we well, we ended up creating a furniture piece called Conversation Corner, where we spoke to the residents and co-designed with them and asked them what it was that they felt the, the space was missing. And a lot of them said that they were missing a space to be able to sit and talk with each other and just have your lunch because it was all sort of just like a concrete um, courtyard. So we ended up not only designing this for them, but with them because we ended up drawing everything out with them, selecting the colors, selecting the materials with them, but also teaching them basic carpentry skills that we uh, used to assemble this model. So this was just a really, really special project because it taught me that to be a design practitioner doesn't mean only independently working for myself or working for a single client, but the fact that the work I do make has a great impact on the world. And like Jason said, this one's currently being manufactured for it to actually permanently be, obviously not made of wood, be made of steel, be placed there so it's, it's incredible that the course gives us the opportunity like i said not only to work with live clients and build our portfolio in that way but we're able to actually make a real genuine impact in these spaces that we're working in um, um this is just i wanted to share the well my own personal um work account if anyone has any questions or anything this is a good place to contact me or even if you just want to see what's going on in the world of a third year product and furniture design student but I also wanted to share the fact that Chelsea um, product and furniture design has a Instagram where we share a lot of previous student work exhibitions um, open uh, progression exhibitions things like that so if you're interested in getting to know a little bit of the behind the scenes of what goes on in the course this is a great place to find it and I'm sure as well if you have any questions or would like to come to the end degree show or any things like that I'm sure you could just message on there either me or someone on there and yeah that's me great thank you so much to you Jason the ladies there really great to hear from you thank you um I can see that a few have, of you have started to ask some questions so please continue to do that by writing your questions in the question box in a few moments we will do the Q&A um I'm just going to go over a few more things um without bombarding you I know you've had quite a lot of information um but the next steps as Jason did mention is applying for UCAS. He was correct with that deadline, so it is the 31st of January. 
Um, and UAL do have a whole page on portfolio advice. So please check out the website for more information about that. Um, Jason obviously went through the course in great detail, but you can see that all on the course page as well. So it's broken down on there. And then finally, Mercedes also mentioned about workshops and the facilities available for students at Chelsea. I would recommend if you can, if you're in this country, to come and visit the college and to get a college tour where you get to see all of the general facilities and the workshops. The next one that we have happening is on the 7th of November, and you can book onto that online. Finally, accommodation. A few of you may be interested in accommodation or you might start to think about it right now. Um, I would recommend attending the accommodation team's webinar. So again, that's an online, online event and sort of like this, and that will take place on the 21st of November. Again, you can book your place on our website. Um, the nearest calls um, that's closest to Chelsea is Wigram House, but UAL do have 14 halls of residence in total. So there's lots to choose from. Again, if you want to see a little bit more about each of those choices, you can have a look on their website. It's all on there. And then again, I'm just going to mention the tour again, if you're at a college tour on the 7th of November on our website. And if you want to look at our social media channels, I'd really advise that to get a real feel of what Chelsea is all about, what different courses are on offer. Then please do follow us at Chelsea UAL on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Finally, if you have any questions that you might not have thought of now that you think of in the future, please do email us at Chelsea underscore inquiries at arts.ac.uk. Thank you so much. We're now going to move on to the Q&A.